the Temple City Council September 21st, and we are starting about 7.38. I'm going to call this meeting to order. May we have the roll call, please? Yes, Mayor Pro Tem. Council Member Chavez? Here. Council Member Mann? Here. Council Member Biscara is still trying to log in. Mayor Pro Tem Sternquist? Yes. Mayor Yu is absent. Motion to excuse uh, Mayor Yu for cause. A second. Any objections? So moved. It, my whole screen just went like. We can see you and we can hear you. Okay, here we go. We're calling in your audio unmuted during public comment and when public comment is open during an item discussion. You can also email your request to speak to cities.tuffcity.us right now and indicate on the subject line the item which to provide comment to. We move to item three, our invocation, and I am pleased to welcome Pastor Jim Walden from First Baptist Church Temple City, located at 6019 Baldwin Avenue, and he will provide our invocation this evening. Thank great. you, Jim. Thank you. Yeah, let's pray. Father, this is so great to get together again, and I love this council. I love this city. I love the leadership you have, and Father, you've been so good to us. And you have given us these leaders who have given up their time and their lives to help. And I just ask again that you would bless them richly with wisdom. Lord, that you would protect Temple City. And you would continue to be so good to California. Father, thank you for loving us. And we look for you to continue to do more and more. Thank you for this night. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you, Jim. We move to item four, our beliefs. If you would stand and um, William, can you lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance, please? Yeah, sure. Please put your right hand over your heart. Ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to, to the flag to the United flag. States of America. The the Republic for which it stands, one nation, one nation. God. God, it's 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 First Thank of all, you. Cindy shouldn't be running. Around. I'm sorry. We got council member Barra back. William, I'm sorry. Can you repeat that? Oh, I just said, well, we got council member Viscara back. That's all. Oh, great, thank you. Okay, we'll move to item five, ceremonial matters. This is a tough one. Um, tonight, we have the opportunity to recognize Pastor Jim Walden's contribution to the community of the city and his church community and the, the audience to congratulate you on your retirement. I don't want to retire because then you're leaving. <laughs> um, Pastor Jim Walden was born in Boston, Massachusetts and grew up in Michigan. He moved to the Midwest and obtained his master's degree in Chicago. He served a church in Illinois as pastor started a church in Kansas City, Missouri, served as pastor for 19 years. Which has been there for four years and has been serving as a senior pastor at First Baptist Church, Baptist Church Temple City, nine years. He's a third year, I'm sorry, he's a third generation pastor and the case of four children. He's married to his wife, Deanna, and enjoys playing golf and basketball with his son, Gabe. 
Mr. Walton has been a supporter of the city and someone that we can call on and rely on his services are needed. We miss his positivity and energy. And personally, I am so eager to call you my friend and just my full with gratitude for everything that you have done for this community and um, will continue to do your course for our class. And we will keep all, you and your family in our prayers. And you know that you always have a home here in Temple City. So, um, Pastor Walden, we have a um, certificate of recognition, and that will be coming your way soon. And I know, I know, our council okay. members have some things they'd like to share with you. So, um, Council Member um, Chavez, will you share with us? Thank you. Well, you know, this is one of those uh, events of mixed emotions. I'm so very, very happy for you that you are finally retiring. You're going to get to enjoy life with a little pressure on you. And Hello. Uh, I know that you and Deanna are going to have a great time in, in your retired life. Um, and so I wish you nothing but the best. And also, Jane, who's sitting here beside me, certainly sends her best wishes to both of you as well. But of course, the mixed emotions is that we're going to lose you. You have been such a pillar in our community over the years. It's just, uh, I mean, to go, I, it'd be hard to go through the list Can of you all the talk? things that you've contributed. Of, yes. of personal, and personal, of course. Brian sent a message saying he can hear me. Okay, so Fernando's talking, I guess. Uh, I can hear him, but at any rate. Peggy, can we hear him? I just want to tell you. Pastor Thank Walden, you. that have, giving me the opportunity to do my State of the City address in your church was one of the highlights of my political career. You were such a gracious host. It was such a great venue. And just all the things, all the events at your church uh, and your smile and just your giving nature. We're going to miss it. And, uh, and I'm going to miss it. And hopefully, uh, if we ever get out there, we'll be able to reconnect. And as Cindy said... You always have a home here in Temple City. And if you're ever this way, certainly feel free to come by and say hi. So thank you so much. And may God bless. And our prayers go with you, of course. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Council Member Mann. Yeah, this is a bittersweet moment for me, too. I mean, ever since I've been on the uh, Pastor Walden, you've, you've been what I consider to be a a model example for everyone in Temple City. Um, and, and not just because you play such an important part in all of our community events, you, you work so well with, with us and, and others to make those positive and great things happen. Uh, you know, from Camellia Festival to Miss Temple City to the list just goes on and on. And every time I think about those events, I, I realize it's, it's at First Baptist Church. Mm. And so, become like this prime location for where so many great things happen. And, and I think just from a more personal uh, note, I, I just think you're, you, you embody the spirit of, of, of what I consider to be all the great Christian values um, that, that we, we should have. And, and it's inspiring for me because every time I interact with you or see you in the community, it reminds me, hey, that's someone I want to be striving towards to, to become, you know, to achieve that level of character and dedication. So, so I'm, I'm happy for you and your family uh, in, in your retirement, but I, I will miss you dearly. Oh, thank you. Thank you, William. Can you see me? Yes. Can well, see you okay. Um, our, our paths only crossed periodically, but I was always aware of you, and I've always appreciated the work that you do. Um, I particularly enjoyed your coming to, to our meetings and saying the prayer and wishing us, the city, the planet, the best. And uh, as William said, uh, you're one of those people that embodies 
uh, what the, the Christian ethic and and just a downright good person and fun to talk to. So I I will mi miss not seeing you around here. And best of luck. And by the way, I've been retired for about ten years. It's it's a neat thing. You'll enjoy. <laughs> good, 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 good. Oh, thank okay. you. You are. I'm sorry, but I think I'm back now. Can Can anybody hear me? I can hear you. At, at time, okay. yeah, yeah, we can hear you. Go ahead, Jim. I'm sorry. Did Pastor Walden leave us? I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, there? I, I might. Yeah, I'm here. Okay. Pastor Walden, go ahead. Oh, okay. I'm sorry, you're, you're cutting in and out. It might be on my end. I do not know that I am worthy of such friendship and accolades from all of you. Um, this has been a very emotional decision because some of the decisions since I'm only 61 has come because of some heart issues that I have. The cardiologist claim it's not life threatening, but the day to day grind they think has been adding stress. The heart itself is good, but the signals and impulses it's getting have not been. And so my wife and I really since May have grieved over this decision. We've loved living here. We have felt loved. This is such a fantastic community. And uh, I just sense the way as I've just wanted to serve this town for the love of the people and the love of Jesus that I have been so well received. And what, what can I say? You folks are so precious to me. And uh, um, my wife and I have wept many a night coming up with this decision. Uh, we are moving back to the Midwest to live near her mom. And we have other family there. So uh, all I can say is, my goodness, Temple City and all the leaders, we love you and thank you. Thank you and God bless you. Thank you. Okay, we move on to um, item six, public comments on items not listed on the agenda. The city council will now hear public comments regarding items not listed on the agenda. The procedure to address the city council is highlighted on the first page of this agenda. This section is limited to 30 minutes total. The city council will now hear the public comments. And for those of you calling in, your audio will now be unmuted. Please state your name so you can be added to the speaker's list. To avoid callers from speaking over each other, we will call your name to speak. You can also email your request to speak to cityclerk at templecity.us right now and indicate on the subject line the item you wish to provide comment to. Our city clerk, Peggy, do we have um, any email public comments or someone wishing to speak? Yes, Mayor Pro Tem, we do have one. Uh, we have asked the public to unmute their audio if they wish to speak at this time so they could state your name and we could add them to the uh, speaker list. But we do not have any email public comments or email requests to speak. So we'll turn it over to the caller so that they could state their name and we could add them to the speaker's list if they wish to speak. Caller, Thank could you. you please identify yourselves? Hi, this is Mayor Pro Tem Valerie Munoz from the city of La Puente. Thank you. I see one other caller, but their audio has not been muted. I mean, unmuted, excuse me. So um, Mayor Pro Tem Sternquist, we have Mayor Pro Tem Munoz on the line. Good evening, Valerie. Good evening, everyone. Um, good evening, Honorable Council um, for the great city. Um, at Temple City, I would have to say the second best because I'm obviously biased for the city of La Puente, but hope everyone is well and staying safe during these unprecedented times. 
Um, the reason why I'm calling is as your representative on the San Gabriel Basin Water Quality Authority, I just wanted to personally invite um, all of the city officials to our um, San Gabriel Water Quality Authority special updates for city officials, which will be held on Tuesday, October 5th at 12 p.m. It is an online webinar. Um, topics include local reliability in times of drought, updates on the San Gabriel Valley groundwater remediation projects that are currently going throughout the San Gabriel Valley, and also updates on local Prop 68 and federal funding that, um, moving forward in our community. Um, as y'all are aware, back in 1993, the California State Legislator um, created the San Gabriel Basin Water Quality Authority with the sole purpose is to ensure um, clean drinking water in our basin. With over 81 ton tons of contaminations removed till this day, and over uh, $500 million in secured settlements um, going towards remediation. Our goal is to just continue to provide um, advocacy towards clean water um, efforts, as well as just provide general updates to our great local officials, such as yourself, so that you're aware of what's going on in the San Gabriel um, Basin. Um, overall, overall, our goal is to lower cost of public cleanup projects that have been delayed for years and the Water Quality Authority has aggressively pursued um, outside funding from responsible parties and federal and state governments to ensure that we continue to clean our basin, especially during the time where we have the discussion and hot topics of drought that's just um, in the horizon. We want to make sure that we're um, providing just general information and updates to our local officials and regarding some of these um, topics of discussion. So I hope um, that um, all of you guys, your city manager, any staff would be present for our update, which we'll be holding, hosting on Tuesday, October 5th at noon. It's around a 45 minute presentation with questions um, that we can answer at the end. Hope every one of you has a great evening and thank you for the opportunity to speak tonight. Um, I will also be sending out another email tomorrow morning with the information to register and hope to see you then. Thank you. Thank you, Valerie. Okay, we are moving to item seven. Our cons oh, did we have another speaker, Peggy? I'm sorry. Mayor Pro Tem, um, we have another caller, but they have not um, cho chose to unmute to speak, and we do not have any email requests to speak. Okay, thank you. We move to item seven, consent calendar. All consent calendar items may be approved in a single motion as recommended unless removed for further discussion. Um, do we have I make a motion that we approve the consent calendar? I'll second it. Um, I'm sorry, Mayor Pro Tem and council members. Um, I just wanted to bring to your attention that for our consent calendar item 7E, it's a approval of final map. Um, the staff report is correct. Everything was, uh, the description and title is correct. We just updated the attachment uh, with the parcel map for that item. So I just wanted to let you know that. Okay, so we'll be approving it with that um, update, correct? Thank you, yes. Okay, um, can we have that motion again? I'm sorry, was that Tom? Yes, motion to approve. Second? Okay. So, okay. Any objections? So moved. We need to have a roll call for this, correct? Yes, please. Thank you. May we have thank you. Thank you. Council Member Chavez? Yes. Council Member Mann? Yes. Council Member Viscara? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Sternquist. Yes. Okay, that motion is approved unanimously. We move to, sorry. I'm trying to get up here. Um, item eight, public hearing none, unfinished business none. Item 10, new business, adoption of resolutions calling for the March 8th, 2022 general municipal election and regulations and approval of election related services. And our city clerk is going to um, make a presentation. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem and council members. Um, tonight, the item before you is 
uh, pertaining to the city's upcoming general municipal election on March 8, 2022. For the city's charter, our general municipal elections are conducted on the first Tuesday after the first Monday in March of even number years. In preparation for the 2022 election, it is necessary for the council to adopt a resolution calling for the election on March 8, 2022 adopt a resolution requesting election related services from Los Angeles County and adopt a resolution establishing candidate statement regulations for candidates pertaining to statement of qualifications submitted to the voters. To conduct the city standalone election, staff presents two options for council's consideration. One is to direct staff to conduct the standalone election utilizing various election support services with the cost of $222,100 or to conduct with Los Angeles County Clerk to conduct the city standalone election by providing full election services with the cost of $439,000. The, the city's general municipal election will follow the traditional model of accepting mail ballots and providing voters the option to vote in person at their designated precinct the difference between city conducting the election versus the county conducting the election is that uh, with the county conducting the city's election, after staff assist potential candidates during the nomination period, county will take over all aspects of the election. Um, staff has evaluated both options and is recommending that city council direct staff to conduct the standalone election with approval of agreements for election related support services Nomination period begins on Monday, November 15, 2021, and ends on Friday, December 10, 2021, unless an incumbent does not file. Then the period nom nomination period is extended to Wednesday, December 15, 2021. Those interested in polling nomination papers can contact the city clerk's office to schedule an appointment, um, and appointments will take approximately 45 minutes to an hour. There's no fee to pull nomination papers, but qualified candidates are responsible for the translation and printing costs of their candidate statement if they choose to include one in the voter information pamphlet. And with that, I'm available to answer your questions. Mayor Pro Temp Strinquist, you are muted. Sorry. Um, Council Member Mann, any questions? I have no questions, thank you. Councilmember Viscara. Peggy, what you're recommending is our usual process, right? Correct. Okay. No other questions. Councilmember Chavez. Uh, no questions, thank you. Um, I don't have any questions um, either. Um, City, uh, Peggy, do we have any email public comments? Mayor Pro Tem Sternquist, there are no email public comments or email requests to speak. And we will ask the audio uh, callers to unmute their audio if they wish to make a comment. The caller has not unmuted their audio. Okay. So um, we are going to close public comments. If there are um, any final questions from council, now's the time. Anyone? Okay, may we have a council motion, please? Uh, Mayor Pro Tem Sternquist, I make the following motion that we Adopt resolution number 21-5553 calling the election for March 8th, 2022. And that we adopt resolution number 21-555 establishing candidate statement regulations for candidates pertaining to statement of qualifications submitted to the voters. And that we direct staff to conduct a standalone traditional model general municipal election and approve the following professional services agreement to provide election support services. First, the Los Angeles County Registrar Recorder County Clerk to provide election related services for the term October 1st, 2020 to May 1st, 2022. Um, and that we uh, retain Heart Interactive for uh, ballot design 
tabulation software equipment and associated services in the amount of $55,000 for the term October 1st, 2021 to May 1st, 2022. And that we retain pro vote solutions for ballot production, print and mail services in an amount of $70,000 for the term 2021 to October, 2022. And lastly, that we appropriate an additional $69,280 to the election budget for a total of $221,100. Thank you, Tom. Do we have a second? Second. Any objections? Roll okay, call vote again, Mayor. Thank you. Sorry. I'm sorry? My apologies, go ahead. Okay, can we have a roll call, please? Yes, Mayor Pro Tem. Council Member Chavez? Yes. Council Member Mann? Yes. Council Member Viscara? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Stern closed. Yes. Okay, I want to thank you for your willingness to do this. You do such a great job. So we have all the faith in you. So I'm we're all very grateful that we're moving forward with you doing our election. Thank you. you. Know, I, I, I think the first election that I, I ran in in 2009, I believe the cost was under under $70,000, wasn't it, uh, Peggy, probably? Time has changed, haven't we? Wow, amazing, all right, thank you. It's okay. a supply chain problem. Yeah, I guess so. Blame it on COVID, everybody else does. All right, we move to item B a memorandum of agreement between the San Gabriel Valley Council of Governments and the City of Temple City for participation in the San Gabriel Valley Regional Food Recovery Plan. And that is going to be our city manager and our management analyst, who is? Ashley Avery and I will, will be here and Ashley will be able to answer any questions as well. Uh, thank you, thank Mayor. You. Pro, thank you, Mayor Pro Tem and members of the council. Before you today is a one of the other steps in implementing SB 1383. Earlier this year, you went through a complete revision of your franchise agreement for waste hauling, which included an organics material, uh, a recycling program. The other step in the SB 1383 compliance process is including those food generators or organic waste generators, and they're primarily uh, rest, larger restaurants and uh, grocery stores to ensure that actual recovery of edible food for human consumption is part of that recycling or, pro or reuse process. Um, by 2024, I believe 20% of all ed edible food in, or excuse me, all organic waste should be through the um, recycling process to be reused as edible food for to food banks and others. This is a, a significant endeavor that many cities are not equipped. There's about 15 cities in the San Gabriel Valley COG who are initially part of this uh, memorandum of uh, and joint kind of participation effort. The COG only received one response to the, re, to the request for proposals, SCS. While the scope of work is not in the MOU itself, you have attached the RFP that lays out some of the scope of work, which I know is not as traditional as you're used to, but the really this is a very technical issue to deal with all. So this vendor would be going out working with the generators of organic waste that meet their criteria in terms of what the state is requiring so that, that we can get to that 20% threshold by 2024. Um, the reason why uh, most cities are going this direction is more small, small cities like ours, like we have deferred in that um, organic recycling responsibility to Athens for residential and commercial. This is an additional step in this process. Um, SCS will work with each of the vendors um, and each of the participants in the city. Um, what we will come back with in the future is some of the costs related to uh, enforcement. Um, that is an annual cost that Cal Recycle actually works with each city and the city is responsible for this mandate at the end of the day, similar to the manner in which they were responsible for the SB 1383 organic and recycling requirements uh, that we uh, worked with with Athens with the restated agreement. 
Um, if there's any questions about this uh, step in terms of the burden on staff, this is a way to not only relieve the burden on staff, but um, something that um, Ashley, Miss Avery is very good and has some expertise on the waste hauling side, but this is even a more specialized uh, service that um, again, represented by the fact that the COG only got one, one response to their request for proposals. The other, the other element of this real quickly is that during your um, discussions and the eventual adoption of the restated uh, franchise agreement, we slightly increased what are called AB 939 fees. AB 939 fees are meant to assist in the implementation and execution of these recycling and organic recycling type programs. So um, it was a good thing that we increased those fees just very slightly so that we can actually pay for these types of programs going forward. Um, Ashley, if unless I've missed anything, um, let me know. Uh, and uh, we're, we're here for any questions. Thank you. Is Ashley on? Yes, I am. Okay. Did you want to add anything, Ashley? Uh, no, I believe the city manager pretty much covered everything. Okay. Next time we're going to let you do it, Ashley. <laughs> All we right. hear from Brian too much. <laughs> That's the truth. <laughs> okay. We are going to open public comment. Do we, we have, have any... uh, council comment or council questions first? I know you don't have any questions, Tom. Yeah, I do. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, I have a real simple question. Okay, so in layman's terms, what is this? Are we trying to save food that is being thrown away for other people to eat? Is that what we're doing? Uh, I, I don't quite understand what this is really all about. I'll, I'll punt. I'll uh, since uh, I'll punt that to Ms. Ash, Ms. Avery for a moment. Because so it doesn't Avery, sound very, it doesn't sound very appealing. But uh, maybe in the long run, it is. So, Ms. Uh, Avery, what exactly you, are we doing here? Ms. Avery, do you want to go over real briefly? Because she's Ms. Avery's been part of all the conversations with the COG. So, Ms. Avery, do you want to go through just real briefly uh, the question from Councilmember Chavez? Sure. Um, so essentially, yes, that's correct. It's trying to capture food that is perfectly fine for consumption that would otherwise be thrown away. Uh, it's so The purpose of the bill is supposed to connect, uh, connect the food recovery institutions such as nonprofit organizations and churches with the generators such as restaurants and grocery stores. Um, the infrastructure is not well, hasn't been there in the past. So the purpose of SB 1383 is to build that infrastructure and build those relationships with the generators and those who would distribute the food to people who need it. Okay, you know that when I read this, it reminded me of the Seinfeld episode when they were trying to get rid of the muffin stumps and nobody would want them. That's what it reminded me of. So I, I hope that's not what we're doing here, but it sounds like it's a bigger and better program. And I can understand. So apparently the, uh, the, uh, it's, it's, it's to allow the city to use their, the COGS resources to get this food to like maybe homeless shelters and people who would probably use it, correct? Yeah. Yes. All right, thank you. All right, appreciate it. Councilmember Mann, any questions? <laughs> Maybe more questions than I would like, but uh, <laughs> I'll be short. Uh, so the, um, you mentioned the bill is to create this infrastructure to connect those two, two different entities. Uh, is, is it safe to assume that when we're talking about um, the generators, we're talking about supermarkets? I mean, this, this, I have a hard time imagining this would include like restaurants and dining. Right. It would be large generators like grocery stores, um, maybe a really large restaurants, not your 
mom and pop typically they don't generate enough uh to be required to do this okay so so the actual infrastructure as in the sorting and collecting and identifying of food that will fall into this category that's on the supermarket to create that right that that's the, the city has and we we have no part in organizing that effort we're just saying you got to do it right is that correct? right yes okay uh, let me go down my list here so uh, just just to clarify in the staff report it mentions we get 54,000 annually in AB 939 funds so i guess back to city manager cook's point that's that's really the the money you're talking about as part of the recent recent franchise agreement with Athens that's not money coming from the state right that's correct that's money coming from the ratepayers that was before that that AB 939 fee was already instituted prior to the most recent restated agreement was up just a little bit because we knew these types of programs could be coming down that would be coming down the pike. And uh, so, yes, that's, it's not coming. It's, it's uh, user generated. Okay. So what would, um, in, in the agreement, we've identified, you know, a contact person from our side, as well as the cog side. Um, I guess what would be our role exactly if, the consultants doing the outreach and doing the, I'm guessing that the consultant is also collecting the data that's necessary for reporting guidelines to the, to the state. Um, there was one bit in there that says um, on our end, the city, we have to respond to data requests, but I, I just wasn't, what I'm trying to get at is what, what's our role in this entire process? Uh, essentially, that is our role. It's just to uh, be cooperative with the consultant if they ask for a list of businesses or um, any kind of information that the city would have uh, and to work with them. Um, other than that, it would be to report to the meetings that the COG organizes so they can report on their findings or any issues they might be having. And, um, but essentially, that that would pretty much be the city's role, at least from the staff's perspective. Okay. And, and I, my next question is maybe more about the inspection side, which I know is gonna be brought back, I guess, later at a later date. But I, I guess if we don't have to answer now, don't worry about it. I, I'm just kind of curious since it's explicitly states that the COG and the consultant has no power to issue citations. I presume that has to involve us. And so I was just trying to imagine, I mean, logistically, how would that look like? Um, but if we don't know, then, then I'll, I'll, I'll save that for maybe, maybe next time. I would have, it, it most likely would work the, similarly to how we deal with other contractors who don't have the authority to you know, cite people, but the, they would notify the city or myself that uh, someone is not participating or they aren't doing what the law requires of them. And then we would uh, enforce use, I guess, using code enforcement to cite them from the city. The contractor just can't do it themselves. Okay. And uh, my last one is maybe a bit more technical in nature. Um, since the goal of SB 1383 is to reduce the um, disposed surplus food by 20%. What is that? Do we know what that 20% is measured from? Like what's, what's that baseline reference point that the state is looking at? That I do not have the answer to, uh, at least not right in front of me. Uh, I know a lot of the, the baselines for organic waste and things like that were based on uh, disposal from previous years, uh, but I don't know about the food recovery since this is a, a brand new, as far as, I, as far as I know, it's a brand new uh, program. It's nothing that the state hasn't implemented before. So I don't know where those numbers come from. I'd have to look into that for you. Okay, thank you. That, that's my, all my questions. 
Okay, Council Member Viscara. Fernando? Is, did we lose him, Brian? I see him, I see his name on the screen, but I see it's muted as well. Okay. Any of your staff um, can assist. Council Member Chavez, do you have any other while no, we're I already, waiting? I, no, I already asked my questions. Thank you. Okay. Um, I don't have any questions. So let's see if we can get Fernando to unmute. You, you could go to the public, sir, and then bring it back. He could ask any questions uh, after the public has spoken. Okay, let's do that. So we are going to open public comment. I'm, I'm back, and, Cindy. Oh, okay. Do you have any comments? No, I, no I, I'm a little confused, but I think uh, the questions were the appropriate ones. That's it. Okay. What what are you what are you confused about? The 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 program. That's okay. Not to worry. Maybe Ashley can reach out to you and help you go through some of the um, things you have questions about, Fernando. Okay. At All a right. later. Yes. If, if, unless you want her to do it now. No, that's fine. Okay. I don't trust um, this computer. So I don't trust my, my electronics here. Everything keeps going out. Yeah, it seems everybody is having challenges this evening. Let's move to public comment. April Dumpster request. Hey. No callers on the line, and there are no email requests or email public comments. Okay, so we're going to close public comment. And are there any final questions from council members? I don't have any questions, maybe more of a comment. This seems to be another one of these uh, regulations that the, sport, the state has decided to push on to the cities um, without too much direction. Fortunately, we're able to rely on the COG to, I guess, help us in meeting whatever these requirements and deadlines are. Um, it would have seemed to me, and I don't know, I mean, for 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 20%, that doesn't seem to be a whole lot. Uh, and it seems to be a lot of money to be spending in trying to get another 20% of what would otherwise be thrown away into the hands of, I suppose, people who are going to consume these, uh, these food items. But uh, it would appear to me that uh, up to now, uh, I mean, I know when I go to the grocery store, I see Albertsons already given away a lot of their stuff to organizations on their own. Um, my question or concern would be what, what effect do those types of actions have on our duty to comply? Is that going to be counted or not counted in this so-called 20%? Council Member Chavez, that is what the, that's what the consultants will be working with each of the generators for to kind of, um, so they will, they're the ones who will go to Albertson and say, uh, you need to give us this disposable and then we'll deal it out rather than going directly to whoever they want to give it to. Not necessarily, but just qualifying it, quantifying it from a reporting standpoint that's dealt with. Yeah. All right. Well, good luck to them. I, uh, hopefully the, those in the state legislature uh, know what they're doing uh, and uh, we'll see it come to fruition or not okay or not yes thank you so all right can we get a council motion uh cindy can can i make a mayor pro tem can i make a brief comment as well of course, of course. yeah so yeah. I, I think i i agree with council member chavez it, it seems it seems like everyone's just kind of flying by the seat of their pants when we're trying to meet these uh, new state regulations. Um, but um, I, I did have one, one other quick question. So if, if I'm reading the staff report correctly, the, the, uh, there's an initial cost for the consultant to do all the outreach and education. 
And then there's the subsequent costs that we're estimating that will not exceed $40,000 annually, and that's for inspection and improvement. Is, is that correct? That is correct, sir. Okay, all right. Well, I, I think my, my main comment would just be, uh, I mean, I, I'd be more curious to see how the whole logistics of inspection and enforcement works, because I mean, we're, we're a small city, so we, we, have to, we have to contract certain things out, but how that interfaces with you know, our responsibility as an agency to be the ones issuing citations and how much time does that take away from our staff that is obviously busy doing other things. I mean, I, I'd be kind of curious to see what, what that impact would be on, on our operations, hopefully not, not a lot. Um, so, so that that's one of my concerns. My my second concern is, I'm I'm never a big fan of of um, approving something based on only an RFP. Um, I mean, in 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 the in what the COG has given us, they just gave us a one page letter saying we evaluated the proposal from SCS engineers and we approve it. Well, if they only got one proposal, I guess they have no choice, right? But <laughs> At the same time, I, I, I guess we should, the COG should have, uh, give us the courtesy of seeing what the actual scope of work that SCS submitted to them. So we, we know kind of what, what it is and how it matches with, with the COG's expectations. Um, I don't think it changes how I, you know, I, I agree that this needs to be done and this is probably the best way to do it. Uh, but I think as a matter of documentation, I think we should reach out to the COG and ask for that. And Mayor Pro Tem, I just have a follow-up question based on what William has brought up. What does uh, what do we use AB 939 funds on? I know that the report says that we collect about 54000 annually, and uh, we ha currently have a fund balance of $621,000. What do we use these funds for besides something like this? This will be the first time in the seven years I've been here. That we'll have, we have we'll have used the AB nine thirty nine funds. What can they be used for besides programs like this? This uh, uh, I can either let uh, Susan, uh, Ms. Pagadas, or Ms. Avery can kind of speak to that a little bit more. But um, they are in order to effectuate and implement um, state mandates related to uh, recycling, cow recycle programs, and what is mandated under SB thirteen eighty four uh, thirteen eighty three. So would this tie into what we're doing with uh, Athens and and all those things that we've been doing? Is that is that uh, money I'll, used for something like that as well? I'll let, and Ms. Avery, please jump in. Um, there is some there is some overlap, but uh, you got to think of what the the agreement that you did related to organics uh, for residential and commercial, somewhat separate to this program, even though they're part of the same bill. Is that a Ms. Avery, is that a good way to, or do you have a better way of explaining that? Uh, yeah, that's pretty much um, accurate. It's just that uh, food recovery is, it's not really related to solid waste. So it's a completely different industry. Um, so I know that Athens may not have the staff that would be an expert in food waste recovery. Um, AB 939 funds can be used for anything that uh, helps the city implement programs related to the 1989 AB 939 bill. Which is what? The AB 939 bill, it's, it's really to um, implement education, the outreach and recycling program. Sorry, this is uh, Susan Paragas, uh, Director of Admin Services. So it's more, um, to comply with the recycling program <laughs> that the state has, which includes the recycling of the food waste. It, it, it appears based on representations of Mr. Cook that for the last seven years, we haven't been spending any of this money. It's just been, I, I presume, sitting in the bank accruing interest. And now this, these new regulations come along and, and uh, we're gonna start spending it. Although it's really kind of still unclear to me how much all of this is going to cost. I guess it remains to be seen what this inspection program is going to cost and we'll revisit that later on down the road. But, uh, 
uh, it could cost up to forty thousand dollars a year just for the inspection program and i'm assuming that uh that means that the other program the the rest of it is about 20 grand so that's about 60 grand a year could be where we're only getting 54 annually so we're going to start eating into this 621 i'm assuming at some point in time um and i would to me it's like i'm i wasn't really familiar with these funds particularly i'm sure we've discussed them at some point but you would think that maybe we uh should start spending some of this money before the state decides as they have in the past to take it away from us we have not um, been requested to return the funds it's and we have not had any recycling programs so other cities have used these funds that they receive um, to possibly have those glue bins in the offices or have given those recycling bins to the community. Um, that's what um, the city that I used to work for did with our AB 939. We, so, used to have, we used to have recycling bins around town. I don't see those anymore. Would, would these funds cover something like that where people could yes. go and drop off their things in these recycling bins? Yes, they can, but um, I, I'm not sure how the Athens um, trash program. No, no, no. I'm talking about uh, clo the clothing and things like that that we used to have around town. I don't see those anymore, though. I they? don't believe That has nothing to do with clothing. this. This only yeah. has to do with food items, I, I'm assuming. Food items and trash or paper. And trash. Dishes, yeah. All right, well, uh, it opens my eyes. It's that uh, we got $600,000 sitting around there doing nothing. Maybe we should find something to do with it. Um, my concern is that, uh, as we have seen in the past, uh, when state legislators find that you have money sitting around and you're not doing with it anything with it, they tend to uh, take it away. And uh, that would certainly not be something we would want to see down the road somewhere else. I would suggest, um, Council Member Chavez, that <coughs> staff come back to us within 30 days and let us know what options we have available to us to spend that money, not just to spend it lightly, but maybe there's some things there that we should be spending on and maybe check with some other cities and see what they're doing. Um, Susan mentioned one and come back with us with some ideas. I agree, I mean, I don't think it's gonna be long before the state starts dipping into these type of funds. So might as well put them to good use for our city. I, I totally agree. I, I think uh, I, I, I see the writing on the wall, it's happened before. Um, all right, I, can we get it? Right. Well, I don't wanna beat a dead horse here. We're kind of getting off the subject, but uh, yeah, let's, um, I mean, it sounds like we, we need to do this and this is probably the most economical way for us to do it. William, was that a motion you started? I heard. <laughs> Did I? <laughs> I didn't hear oh, myself. I heard someone. <laughs> I'll, I'll make, I'll move that we authorize the city manager to sign and execute the memorandum of agreement attachment A with the San Gabriel Valley Council of Governments for participation in the San Gabriel Valley Regional Food Recovery Program. Do we have a second? Second. Okay, any objections? So moved, may we have a roll call please? Yes, Mayor Pro Tem. Council Member Chavez? Yes. Council Member Mann? Yes. Council Member Biscara? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Strinquist? Yes. Okay, that motion has passed unanimously. We move to item 11, an update from our city manager. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem. I'll be very brief tonight. Thank you to Ms. Avery and thank you to Ms. Uh, Padagas for um, following up on many of the issues related to uh, AB 939 and the program and more will be coming to you uh, soon. So thank you for that. Uh, real briefly related to um, COVID-19 numbers, the numbers are looking good, but we are still what would be considered a high transmission community. Uh, most of the state of California is, there's only a few counties that have gone below the, low, the high transmission rates, um, even though the trend over the last few days has been very positive. Um, we, with your dog, Kane. With your, with your, with your, uh, with the 
positivity rate and the case rate, we are still trending towards uh, moderate, but it's still in the high transmission rate for now. Um, great, Mr. Murphy will go over a couple items, one of which is related to COVID-19 and virtual meetings, which we may we ask the council and the mayor to call a special meeting on next week as well. So with that, Mayor Pro Tem, I will turn it over. Uh, uh, that concludes my report. Thank you. Item 12, update from our city attorney. Mr. Murphy. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem. I will keep this brief just for technological reasons. Um, I, I guess my mic has been rough tonight. Uh, as the council probably knows, Senate bills nine and 10 uh, were adopted as we discussed last time, uh, were signed by the mayor late last week. A study session has been scheduled for 6 p.m. on October 5th before your next regular meeting, uh, at which time uh, Mr. Reamers and myself will go through um, some of the details of what that means for the city and have uh, some options in terms of moving forward and addressing what, uh, in particular, what Senate Bill 9 may mean for uh, single family residential communities like those that make up most of Temple City. Uh, there is not uh, as yet any litigation against the passage of Senate Bill 9. Uh, there does appear to be a movement starting um, uh, that would put an initiative on the ballot in 2022 that would essentially gut Senate bills nine and 10 and return that local control uh, to uh, local jurisdictions. But we'll keep an eye on that. And again, as I say, 6 p.m. on October 5th, we'll have a large briefing. Uh, also, Assembly Bill 361 was signed. Uh, it's effective immediately. Uh, and it makes changes to the way that we can hold uh, Zoom meetings like this, uh, technological meetings. The governor issued an executive order today that allowed us to continue to hold our meeting tonight this way instead of the way that AB 361 would require. Uh, as Mr. Cook said, he'll, he'll be talking to you to see uh, whether we want to keep uh, going with, uh, keep using technology to hold our meetings uh, beginning in October. And if so, then we'll need to hold a special meeting uh, to adopt a resolution that makes findings that are required by Assembly Bill 361 uh, in order to have meetings stay virtual. Uh, so you'll be hearing from Mr. Cook uh, or uh, Ms. Flores on that uh, at some point in the, the very near future. If you have the meeting, then uh, we'll walk through all of the findings at that time so that you fully understand what the findings mean and also what it means. There will be some slight tweaks to the meetings if we go that route. Uh, one of which will be that instead of the, the video format that we uh, currently use, uh, the format that the people will see is what you see in front of you with the boxes for all of us um, and all of the key decision makers and presenters will, will be live to, um, uh, to the, the people watching at home. So uh, instead of a lot of you know, people uh, with, instead of seeing a lot of names, you'll see a whole bunch of faces. So. That's, that's one key change. There are several others, uh, but we'll go through those if, if we do indeed have a meeting on that. And that is my report tonight. Thank you very much. Thank you, Greg. Okay, um, council reports regarding ad hoc or standing committee meetings. Do we have any? Nope. Okay. Uh, Brian? Yes. Mr. Buck, quick question. On item C, future development of city properties, is the report on the um, temporary library going to them first? I mean, it's been quite some time. The, temp the, uh, the temporary library or the, the uh, reconstructed yes, library? Yes, the chamber site, the old chamber site. Yes, we, we, we have not had, we have not presented that to them yet. We were going to talk to, <clears throat> we're gonna have one-on-one -on -one discussions with the council first, and then we can bring that back to the standing committee for sure. Okay, when are we gonna start those council sessions? Cause it's been months since that was gonna be on an agenda. So if we can move that forward as quickly as possible. 
Yeah, our office will will our office will start uh, booking those appointments with each council member. Thank you. Okay. Um, I, I have a, okay. I have a, I have a question regarding the the ad hoc. Um, what's going on with the city based homeless plan standing committee? I haven't. It's been we formed this back in March, and I don't know that we've had any any reports or anything regarding the progress or what is going on with that meeting, that committee. Anybody uh, um, Tom, we just we just met a couple of days ago. So is there something to report? And or? A presentation from um, Tinny on that. Um, it's a pretty kind of lengthy. Well, the reason I brought it up, is, the reason I brought it up is because we did get some uh, a report from Tinny. I don't know if that was as a result of this standing committee or if that's the recommendation of staff to the standing committee. I just I'd like to just kind of know where we stand with uh, with the standing committee versus, I guess, what uh, is being presented to us by staff. Is there any connection there? Right. Um, we have a, another meeting that we haven't set in the calendar with Ando and I to um, next week to get some more information. So if you would just hold on for a couple more weeks, then we can bring back a more thorough report because the questions and concerns we had will be answered by them. Well, and the reason I bring it up is because I still, I still get emails from the people. Samuel? Over, yeah. What, what is their group? Um, I believe it's the um, coalition, uh, the, um, Temple City Coalition, I believe. And, yes, uh, and, that's and I, I, totally I noticed in the staff report from Ms. Chan that uh, this homeless, and again, it's this is through the, the COG, I guess, again, as well, uh, through their homeless programs that we're going to be, or we're being asked to invest $125,000 in this program and that it sounded to me like maybe some of this is going to be going to that coalition. Um, but I, I don't know, maybe there's more to follow, I guess. Uh, but um, yeah. if, if you wouldn't mind waiting for the, the next council meeting, I think it would be important for Tinny to come and present the um, what she shared with us to the whole council. So Brian, can we schedule her to do that? Certainly. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, any other questions or comments about meetings? Okay. Uh, item 14, council item separate from the city manager's regular agenda. Council member Viscara. Um, I really don't have anything, but I, I just happen to think, Brian, Yes, didn't, sir. Uh, did, didn't uh, uh, Keelan and, and, and Hepler meet with Adam on, on Primrose? I, I believe they did. Uh, and uh, Adam, is there, briefly, is there anything to mention? Yes, um, we did meet uh, last week regarding the Primrose Park art uh, project. And I have an email out for the subcommittee. Um, Council member Viscar, I can connect with you either after the meeting or tomorrow, but we were looking at uh, two dates with the subcommittee so we can bring back that information and then hopefully uh, have a decision made that we can bring back to council sometime in October. Okay, so it's premature right now? Uh, not that it's premature, but we just wanted to uh, meet with the subcommittee one more time before we take it to council. Okay. okay. Thank you. Anything that's else all. for you? No, that's it. Council Member Chavez. Thank you. So uh, apparently, uh, from what I've heard, we're going to be scheduling a special meeting next week to discuss uh, how we're going to move forward with our council meetings. Is that correct? Uh, we would need to, for as Mr. Murphy uh, uh, briefly stated about it, AB. 631 that would require for you to make some findings to continue on a rolling 30-day basis so it's not 
it's not continuously, it would be every 30 days you would authorize the ability and make the findings that uh, virtual meetings would continue for you. And you can make those findings for the council and all the commissions and boards as well. So, um, but so we need to make that before the October 5th meeting. Who makes the final determination as to whether we go back to live meetings? Is it you, it is, is you. it us, is it Mr. Murphy? Is it, uh, it the Pope? It, I don't know, I mean, uh, who's, it's, who's out it's there? It's not me and it's not the Pope. I can guarantee okay. you those two things. Right. It's a combination of the state of California and the city council. Uh, if the state of California, and, and I, should amend that if the state of California or the county of Los Angeles calls a state of emergency, then the city council can make findings that the state of emergency is such that your meeting should be held virtually rather than in person. Uh, you cannot do it on your own without that state of emergency being in place by one of those other authorities. On the other hand, even if there is a state of emergency, you can say that you still wanna meet in person. So it's that combination. There's a legal framework that has to be in place. If it's in place, then the five of you make the call. And the reason I bring it up is because I've been kind of taking an informal survey of other cities. And correct me if I'm wrong, but it appears that we're the, basically the only city in the close proximity that is still meeting virtually, um, at least as far as I know. In fact, uh, in talking with council members this last weekend down in, at Contract Cities, some of these cities have been meeting for months and months about live. Now, of course, there are arguments for and against that. Uh, it's my understanding in being in City Hall that we already are set up to take precautions. There are, there are um, partitions that are set up. There are ch seats that are, are you know, not you can't sit in. I mean, I, I just I mean, after tonight, I, I mean, this is a struggle and it's getting worse. And I don't think it does the city any good. Certainly doesn't do us any good. I, I I'm very frustrated. I can't I can't hear half of you half the time. And I'm sure most of you are going through the same thing. But, you know, when are we going to go back into City Hall and uh, and can't we take the necessary precautions uh, to do so. It appears that that other other cities are already doing it and have been doing it for quite a long time. Uh, so, I mean, who makes that decision? I mean, is that is that something that we're going to discuss this next week that, um, yes, we will continue being virtual or no, we're going to go back in? I mean, even JPIA, who is our risk manager, we're meeting live, okay? Well, of course, we take the necessary protocols, but you know they're meeting live as well. Um, and and so at some point, I think uh, I would like to have some discussion as to you know what we as a council want to do. And I can understand that if there's certain staff that have a reluctance to maybe uh, coming live to these meetings, I'm sure we can accommodate them. I know that uh, as far as JPI is concerned. We not only meet live, but we also allow people to still participate virtually as well, which doesn't seem to be overly burdensome. So, I mean, I don't know how other can my fellow council members feel about it, but I think uh, as, a, as a body, we need to sit down and discuss, you know, what direction we're going to go at some point. Um, and hopefully that's uh, something that we can discuss next week, whether that's the purpose of the meeting or not. I don't know, Mr. Murphy, is it or? Is it not? Uh, two thoughts, sir. One, yes, that would be the purpose of the meeting would be to have that discussion and the resolution would be in front of you for your adoption if you wanted to stay virtual. Uh, second, just for everybody else, um, Council Member Chavez uh, has, has made comments down this line. I would ask that uh, the other three of you not respond with your own thoughts on it. Um, certainly, if you respond individually to Mr. Cook and it becomes very apparent to him that a meeting is not even necessary, then we simply won't have a meeting and your first uh, regularly scheduled meeting of October would happen uh, physically at, at the council chambers because you wouldn't have made findings to, to keep yourselves virtual. 
But yes, sir, the, the purpose of the meeting uh, next week would very definitely be to introduce the topic to you, let you walk through it, let you ask questions, give comments, and then make your decision as to whether you want to make those findings or not. Greg, I have a question. Yes, sir. If we elect to do it, it is, is whether or not there's an audience optional or is an, is an audience automatically allowed to come to the meetings? The audience would have to be allowed in the meeting if you were to meet at City Hall. Uh, one of the issues that would be in front of you is whether uh, having an audience in City Hall creates too much of a risk. That, that would be one of the things that you would be discussing and ultimately making findings on. Can we require and, vaccination and proof to attend the meeting live? Thank you for the question. We'll think about that and bring that back to you. Absolutely. I, I don't know the answer right now, but that's something I will look up before we talk. Absolutely. And, but we don't know about next month yet whether or not a state of emergency will still be in place, right? One is in place right now. And until it is uh, withdrawn by executive order or by uh, legislation, it remains in place. And that's oh, okay. one. And so we know that it's still going to be here uh, because the governor has, has not made any indication he's going to withdraw it and neither has the legislature. Are the state legislators meeting live or are they online? As I recall, I have seen both, uh, and I do not know what they're doing uh, right now. I, I can say, um, actually, I, I do know what they're doing right now. They're not doing anything right now. The legislative session is finished. Uh, many of them are still in Sacramento doing other work, but their regular legislative sessions where all of them fill the houses are, are complete for the year. I don't have um, anything. I don't have anything further. Thank you. Okay, Councilmember Men. Yeah, thank thank you, Mayor Potem. Uh, I know with with a lot going on, uh, it's kind of easy to lose track of. Um, <laughs> for for me, I lose track of time. But it just so happens today is uh, is the Mid Autumn Festival for for those who do celebrate it, um, and. You know, speaking of in-person and, and not in-person events, um, this always reminds me of the time when we, we had uh, partnered with the World Journal to do a mid-autumn festival here in the city. Um, and I'll, I'll be honest, I, I miss those events where, where we're able to uh, gather. Uh, and so, I mean, happy mid-autumn festival for those who celebrate it. And um, yeah, I really don't have to to, to say at this point. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I don't have any uh, <clears throat> thing else that I can think of. I had something, but I lost it. Lost, went, went away. <laughs> anyway, um, are there any other public comments? Items not listed on the agenda, Peggy? <clears throat> Mayor Pelton, there are no callers on the line. And there are no email requests to speak or email public comments. Okay, thank you. I would, I don't know, let me see what happened here. I'm turning the video off because um, staff shared that if I have my video on, that the my voice is very choppy, but um, I would like to take this opportunity to adjourn this meeting in honor and memory of Cameron Fish, who passed away a few days ago. He was a lieutenant with the LA County Sheriff Department, and he was son uh, was the son of council member and a past mayor, Annette Fish. We are heartbroken and offer our sincere condolences to Nan, his sister Lainey, and to the entire family. So with that, this meeting is adjourned. <laughs>